happening here. Let's go bubble, bubble winners, bubble losers. I know Gonzaga fans. Here you go. We're going to talk about you right now. Um, Gonzaga lock. I, 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 yes. I, I mean, come on. Yes. They feel it. This was, as, they're in. it's over. Anybody suggesting they're not in is well, just create. It's well, just, Paul, it's just, Paul said on HQ at like 12, 10 Eastern, he didn't go lock. <laughs> I did a hit with him and Akeem Dermott. She was like, I can't, I can't go there yet. I will bet my life. Oh, are you that Gonzaga is in the right inter- I will bet my life oh, against no. Jerry Palm's life. No. Don't bet your life. I'll put my life on the line against Zag's Frisbee collection that Gonzaga is going to be in the 2024 NCAA tournament. I will yeah. bet my life against his dog. Okay. Well, I-, I tell you this, it was damn impressive. Um, Gonzaga went 70 to 57. Wasn't that close. Now 24 and six Graham EK with his seventh straight game of 20 plus points. And Ryan Nembhard, uh, where were these dudes for the first two months of the season? And I'm going to answer that uh, rhetorical question because Mark Few talked with media afterward and he said, listen, like part of the deal here with some of these teams and and I'm going to paraphrase on him and I'm sure he was thinking if he didn't say this exactly is, you know, you get a little spoiled when you're a one, two, three seed, you know, year after year after year. And then you actually have a year where this is what it's like most of the time where you got to try and get to know each other and gel and build and this is actually relatively normal behavior, and now they've they've been able to do it. And uh, they're going to the tournament. Uh, in terms of what seed they'll get, that becomes another fascinating thing because they're not going to, they're probably not going to have home whites in their first round game, and so that gets really. In- you tell me, Gonzaga is like in the eight nine game. Whoo! I'm here for all of that. I don't care. Can you imagine if it's freaking Gonzaga in the 8-9 and, and Purdue's region, man? Are you kidding me right now if it's that? Uh, online haters of both those programs will be coming out of the woodwork. Are you kidding me? Um, big time stuff for them. And oh, by the way, St. Mary's not winning at home means that for only the second time in the past uh, 12 plus years or so, we don't have a single team that went undefeated in the league play in the regular season. We almost get at least one. We did not get that this year. The most recent time that happened was 17, 18. There's some more bubble stuff, but let's, let's focus it on the Zags and what they were able to do. And, and let's, let's just say it, man, that was an ass kicking and really impressive what they did late in Mirage on Saturday night. I also saw Mark's post game comments. He said, he said, it's amateur hour. People talking on TV. <laughs> I think him and Zags are conspiring against me. They're in cahoots. What if Zags and, and Fuey are in cahoots? They're in cahoots right what now. What if they got a little group? I will playfully push back on this with Few. Uh, he said, like, I'm not paying attention to that. No chance in hell. No chance. You're aware of where you are in the projections. I, I don't buy that from Few, but it's coach speak. I, I, um, I, I under, listen, when you have flipped it the way he's flipped it and you, talk your talk, I, I, I'm fine with it. I don't even mind it. But, like, the idea – I can't speak for what everybody said on television. I don't see it all, all right? But the only thing I've ever said on television about Gonzaga is that they don't have a resume right now. When I, when they didn't have a resume, I would say they don't have a resume right now. They're at real risk of missing the tournament. They don't have a lot of opportunities left, and most of them are on the road. Every time I or you or anybody else said that, it was true. Every time. Like I wrote in the top twenty-five and one on Sunday morning. He had a resume. It just wasn't it wasn't a not an not one for the NCAA oh, yeah, tournament. I'm just saying, like they had an NIT resume for a while. Yeah. Um, when they lost to Santa Clara on January 11th, they were hovering around 50th in the net, and they had zero quadrant one wins. And at that point, I think they only had four quadrant one opportunities ahead of them, mm-hmm. and three of them were on the road. It wasn't looking good. And that's all anybody said is that it wasn't looking good. Well, now they've strung together these wins. Yeah. Um, eight in a row. They've added three quadrant one wins in this eight game winning streak, all of them on the road at Kentucky, at San Francisco, which counts as semi away, according to Ken Palm. It is semi away. I don't think you should be able to just move your home game and, and have it rendered semi away. Well, I- <laughs> Well, I don't. Well, it's not their building. I don't. I don't. They probably had reasons for it. I guess to probably get more money as a program. You know, the other thing I don't like. I don't know how you. We have never talked about this. I don't mean to get off track. I don't like that Big East tournament games are home games for St. John's. That doesn't seem fair. It's a weird one. Um, like that, it's not their. It's not home games. You know I know. Box it and save it because we're we might need to. Okay, go go go. Yeah. This on a, on a future, but I but I hear it's actually worthy of discussion. There. I also say this on Gonzaga. 
dude, of all the years they had. So it used to be a regularity or at least a semi-regularity for about a decade that Gonzaga would get a notable non-con game in February. It was a very good accent on the college basketball schedule, but because of conference bloat, that has gone away for about the past seven or eight years. But it just so happens that Calipari and few, they're good friends. Few convinces Calipari to do the six year series and year six is the final time they're actually going to play at Rupp. <laughs> I mark me now for Calipari is not even coaching Kentucky by the time we get there, whatever, but it lands in GP of all the years where you need a road Q one for Gonzaga at this time. Like this was, it was manna from heaven, man. Like yeah. they needed that. Cause if they didn't have it now, they might win the auto bid. And so it's moved after the fact I get it. But in the moment right here, right now, if they didn't have that Kentucky game and let's say they just filled it with a halfway decent game in December and it's fine, but it's like Q2 or Q1, they're not in the field. They're definitely not a lock status. So it is, it's kind of wild how of all the seasons after not having a high profile February non-con game, not only did they get it this season, not only did Cal and, and, and few like come to an agreement to not play it early in the season, but it happens to be on the road and they happen to win it right before Kentucky kind of turns itself around. I just, I found that to be pretty interesting in how it's uh things are, everything's coming up Gonzaga at the moment. Um, Just to sort of, I don't want to just say Gonzaga is a lock without explaining to you why. I see this all the time on television. It drives me crazy. I see people and they're just like, oh, I think they're a lock. Oh, I think they need to do work. Oh, I need. To, I think they need to win their conference tournament. And unless you actually sit down and put pen to paper and like look at it, look at the bottom of the bracket, and it's you don't really know what you're talking about. So here's where the Zags are right now. They're six and six in the first two quadrants with three quadrant one wins. They do have one loss outside of quad, um, and they only have one loss outside of quadrant one. That's tremendous. Only one loss outside of quadrant one, six and six in the first two quadrants, 17th in the net. You ain't getting left out in the top 20 of the net, all right? So I believe no matter what happens in the WCC tournament, the committee's just simply not going to be able to find 36 at-large resumes better, period. They're probably going to play San Francisco again in the semifinals. Even if they were to lose that on a neutral, it's a quad two loss. They'd be one game below 500 in the first two quadrants. Okay, yeah. Don't lose to like Portland if Portland gets there or whatever. But okay. Yeah. It'll be okay. But I know what you're that's, saying. That's where it gets complicated. That's where like if you want to talk, we can talk. If no. Portland or Loyola Marymount upset San Francisco and gets to the semifinals, then if you lost that one, it's like either a quad three or a quad to four, depending on the team. Perfect. Maybe then you got maybe then you got to talk. I still think they're in no matter what. I don't want to so too. I do think I think so. they're in no matter what. But just 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 know that if they end up playing Portland or Loyola Marymount, they have already played those two teams a total of four times this year. They won those games by 34, 32, 17, and 21. They're not, they're not losing on a neutral court to Portland or Loyola Marymount, which means the worst thing they can do in the WCC tournament, reasonably speaking, is a quad two loss, and that's not going to hurt them. I mean, it'll hurt them, but it's not going to knock them out. Gonzaga's going to the NCAA tournament. Book it. Yeah, uh, good. Uh, good for programs in that part of the country here, Washington oh, State. One, one, one thing, one thing, real quick. You you mentioned Graham Ek. Let me. Tri do you know the trivia time? I don't. I don't think I know it. Maybe trivia he scored time. at least twenty in seven straight games. First yeah. zag to Ooh. score at least twenty in seven straight games. Dude, if this isn't Timmy, like I don't know anything. Don't tell me Timmy never did this. Timmy never did it. Get the hell out of here. That is unreal. True, Timmy never did. Um, okay, uh, yeah, that, that makes no sense. By the way, it doesn't make that makes zero sense. That's a wild nugget. Um, it's not Timmy. Uh, who would it be? Do, 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 do. How about give me Rui? Never happened. Uh, pre Rui. Pre Rui. Wow. Um, pre Rui, but but post step, post Blake step. Post Blake step pre Rui. I know it ain't Josh Heitfeld. Um, I wish it was Josh Heitfeld. Uh, I'm gonna Did say Josh Heitfeld get in trouble for mushrooms. Say, I know. Yeah, I'll say Kelly Olynyk. Maybe I maybe I messed up on my years here. Can I just say it? He had a mustache. Uh, who was a famous other than Timmy? I don't, give it to me. Are you kidding? You don't know a Gonzaga player with a mustache? Well, I mean, Timmy is the one that I think of more than anyone. Um, who am I else? Am I? Uh, there's an obvious. Oh, Mo Morrison. Gotcha. <laughs> God, Adam Morrison. You remember Adam Morrison, right? Dude, it's one of those where it's like, dude, Morrison was the last one to do this. That's that, incredible. That's according to what I saw that uh, Graham E.K. is the first Zag to score 20, at least 20 in seven straight games since Adam Morrison in the 2005-06 season. Wow. 
How about that? Dude, that's incredible. Chat You've even got me. Morrison crying getting on you in the chat. I know. Morrison crying and literally calling me. I know. I got you, folks. I, listen, I, I hear you. I'm still reeling from the fact that Drew Timmy never went seven games in a row with 20 or more points. Um, I was going to give a shout to Washington State, not sure. a bubble team. You're a lock. Okay, you're a lock. You know, talking about locks and how I'm litigious with it. Dude, Wazoo, lock, great win.